Good morning, Stallions and Stallionettes. I'm AK40 Kevin, AKA the Controller Captain. This is the Gamer Heaven. And in today's video, we're gonna explain what input lag or delay is on controllers and show you five methods, three software programs, so very easy to use, and then two a little bit more involved hardware methods to measure the refresh rate slash polling rate. Those two words are used interchangeably, but what they give you is the input lag or delay of your controller, whether you're on console or PC. Let's get it. Welcome aboard, Stallion or Stallionette. Over 200 game pads tested, not letting off the throttle. Controller looking like a model. Reviews go down smooth, pass me the bottle. I got paddles back to the lobby with a waddle. Gaming news, gear reviews, more controllers than you can use. A man of many faces, recording by the smoke and aces. I wasn't born the controller captain, it was you bucking broncos that made it happen. Enough input delay, this video is slapping. So first of all, what is input lag or delay? You've probably heard this terminology before as it refers to monitors and TVs because your gameplay loop, everything from your HDMI cable connection, from your console to your monitor, and sure enough, the mouse or controller you're using to control your game all introduce input lag or delay, meaning you press a button on your controller and there's a few milliseconds where that input isn't registered on screen. Now on the PC side of the house, you can overclock controllers running the Lord of Mice overclocking program in the background to increase your polling rate up to a thousand hertz. Actually, relay my last 8,000 hertz with the latest patch or update, and why this is beneficial since keyboard and mouse is the native input of a PC, whenever you plug a controller to them, whether you're going wired with a cable or you're connecting via Bluetooth to your motherboard, or maybe a little dongle that plugs into one of the USB ports, you're usually going to have the same or more input lag than you're used to on the native consoles that those controllers come from. Now, generally, overclocking only takes place on the PC side of the house. However, that is not always the case. If you get a controller like the GameSir G7 that does have a manufacturer overclock option where you can increase it to a thousand hertz that will indeed increase the polling rate and decrease your input delay even if you're on console which is fantastic but it's very rare you only see that from game sir so far and the victrix gambit kind of does this for xbox using a dual core processor on board processor uh, kevin does it have a cpu on it or something no 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 it's very complicated video coming in the near future but it technically is the fastest wired xbox controller but only with an overclock which takes place on the pc Anyway, sorry, side tangent. So fantastic. We know what input lag or delay is. We know why it's bad. Obviously, when you press a button, you want that input instantly registered on screen, especially if you're playing something like a fighting game, racing game, or a shooter. Quicker inputs, more kills, more thrills, and more paying the bills. But pull back on those reins, Stallion, because we're going to hear a quick word from the partner of today's video. It's been over a year since I ditched my well-known and severely overpriced mobile carrier for Mint Mobile, who has been a delicious mint for me to suck on for the last year or so, as it's been saving me a fortune that I can spin on controllers. And since they leverage T-Mobile's network, I have stellar connection in my house where I actually have 5G and I have yet to drop a call when on the go. They also have full support for eSIM and physical SIM on both Samsung and iPhone models. And I really like their refreshing approach to providing cell service by cutting out the middleman and a bunch of the hoopla that usually boosts up the price for, well, us on the back end. Use my Gamerific Gamer Heaven code in the description below and start saving yourself some sweet ducats with mint. I personally have been using them for over a year and I can't fathom or comprehend going back to another company. Rather than saving the best for last, I'm going to get the best, in my opinion, right out of the way, right up front. And why this program is the favorite for me is going to be the ease of use. It's free to install, incredibly easy to use, also been around the longest, and seems to be the most accurate as long as it's working for your controller. There are certain game pads that simply don't work well with this program, and that's when you're going to use one of the other two we're going to talk about in a second. But if it does work for you, X input test by far is going to be the best method for measuring input lag or delay. Now, this is a program you can download for free on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And what X input test does is test X input controllers. So that is one limitation. This will not work with D input or switch input or Bluetooth controllers. Well, actually, it does work with Bluetooth as long as it's X input still. But there are quite a few game pads that I've used where it just simply doesn't work in X input tests. And that's fine. That's when you move on to Gamepad LA or DS4, which we're going to do uh, in a sec. But why X input test is the most accurate is for a couple of reasons. First of all, X input is going to be the most popular on PC, D input is only used with older launchers or retro titles. All modern games are going to be an X input. So bam, we're already in the input that we should be. Second of all, it's going to be raw input, meaning that this is actually waiting for your physical inputs. Moreover than that, it's not clicking buttons or anything because that doesn't matter as much as you might think for input lag or delay. What's going to matter more so is going to be your movements on the thumbsticks because you're moving these in microscopic increments hundreds of times per second or milliseconds, if you will. So those little inputs on the thumbsticks when you're strafing back and forth 
forth or you're trying to correct your aim with a sniper rifle, all of that is going to be affected by input lag or delay. So I've heard the argument that X input test isn't a great program that you actually need to move the thumbstick in order to get registration of the inputs and get your results. I actually think it's the opposite considering what's important when you're gaming and getting your input delay is going to be, hello, hello, common sense here, your movements on the thumbstick. So just plugging in a gamepad and being like, yep, she's got four milliseconds of input lag or delay is a harebrained theory. And logically what's going to matter for you in gameplay is the movements that you would be doing in gameplay. For example, moving around that left analog stick. It's not like you're doing an operator motion or movement that is uncommon to gaming. It's exactly what you're going to be doing in gaming, which is moving the thumbsticks. In addition to this, X input test also gives you the most data or information in comparison to gamepad LA because you can scroll through the numbers manually and find some major outliers, numbers that are too small or too large for its comrades. And usually those are highlighted down here. Sometimes they're not though, and you can just manually pick them out. Your minimum is going to be the lowest possible result, meaning the fastest connection, and your maximum is going to be the highest or the slowest. Now, these two numbers being closer together means a more consistent connection. And jitter, you want this as low as humanly possible. This is going to be a little bit of sputtery, stuttery, just that, jitter, meaning small inconsistencies in the connection of your controller, whether that protocol be Bluetooth, a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, Xbox wireless, or being tethered via cable, which all of those methods are measurable with X input test. Gamepad LA is a somewhat recently released program, at least more recent than the other brethren we're talking about, DS4 and X input test. And one of the things I really like about this is you do have compatibility for D input and switch input as well. So if you're trying to test the input lag or delay of a D input or switch input controller, Gamepad LA is a great resource for you. Now, when you launch this program, just type in zero, hit enter, and now rotate the left stick without stopping. So again, I like that there's that physical input. Again, I've debunked the theory that programs that don't require user input are more accurate because you're, you're, you're going to be providing user input in games anyway. Makes sense. And this is going to show you your input lag or delay in real time alongside its stock or overclocked clock, which in this case is 500 hertz on this game Surf Cyclone. And you also get stability as well, which you can see moving around in real time, which is very similar to Jitter. This is also programmed within Python, so this runs very similarly to X input test. However, I do find my results to be a little bit more accurate and also give me more visual data with X input test. So as long as controllers are compatible, I use X input test. But if it's a D input or a switch input, Gamepad LA. Also free and also on GitHub. Linked in the description below as well. The next program, which no surprise here, there is an update available. Every time I launch DS4 for a video, there's an update available because they are constantly pushed. One of the reasons I really do like this program. And it's not bullshit either. These patches introduce new features, give support for new controllers. For example, the DualSense Edge, only about a week until that controller was supported by this program. But yeah, great patch notes here. Of course, I'm going to install the latest and greatest. Now, DS4 actually won my program of the year during the controller awards this year because you can simply do so much with a PlayStation 4 DualShock or a PS5 DualSense. And you actually need this program in order to use X Input Test or Gamepad LA with a PlayStation controller because those simply aren't going to be registered as an X Input controller controller right out of the gate, except for by Steam. Steam pushes driver support for it. Now, this little GameSir gamepad, which is actually a Switch controller, isn't even recognized by DS4, but I'm going to plug in a DualShock. We have my controller. We're going to click on edit over here, make this a little more bigger by my head here. Now, tab over to controller readings, and you will see instantly without me doing anything, you have input delay over here at 3.6 milliseconds jittering around. Also, you got my six axis motion sensing for you gyroscope aimers out there. I know you love that. Also, you have some visual representations of both the thumbsticks, and keep in mind, you have a ton of control of your dead zones in here, but that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about is right here, the input lag or delay and why I personally do not use DS4 to measure input lag or delay. And the reason being, this is completely inaccurate. I have overclocked controllers and seen this not change. I've plugged in controllers that I know personally have an eight millisecond input delay and it'll tell me four, inaccurate. The easiest way to put it into layman's terms is that this program isn't designed to measure input lag or delay. This is just a little feature baked in here, but as you can see, this program does a whole bunch of other shit that it's actually purpose to do, such as controlling your thumbstick dead zones, the RGB lighting around the touchpad, even setting up Windows functions for the touchpad. But input lag or delay is not even a second, third, or afterthought in this program. The developer just kind of pasted this in here. And the only thing input delay wise that I would use this program for is over here in the other tab, you can overclock the Bluetooth. And this does matter. This does actually noticeably measurably increase your wireless connection when on PC and connected via Bluetooth. Yes, overclock your Bluetooth right here and then up here hit apply you're good to go ds4 window not an effective tool for measuring input lag or delay the next two methods are going to be physical methods so you actually have to connect a piece of hardware a device to your controller and both of these methods do require partial or full disassembly of the controller because you
you connect wires to contact points on the PCB or printed circuit board of the controller. So these are methods that I personally don't use frequently because they're not very convenient. They're not fast. And if you're somebody that tests a slew of controllers constantly, th th this would be so time consuming to do a full teardown or disassembly of all these controllers. Considering, in my experience, comparing the results you get from these Mr. FPGAs and the GPDLs, which we're going to talk about in just a sec, the results are usually identical to what you get with these software programs. So why do more work and spend money and time building one of these little single board testers if you're going to get the same results? That's just my crazy little theory. Now, the kooky thing is if you search for Mr. Input Test Device, you're not going to be able to purchase any of these. What you can do is build your own. You're going to get a single board computer, something like a Raspberry Pi. Actually, those are a little bit too high end for, for your needs. You can just get yourself an Arduino. Ar Arduino. Ardu I have a hard time with that, but you know what I'm saying here. Or the tiny Pi boards. So not like a Pi 3B plus or Pi 4, but just the little tiny itty bitty one that people use for <clears throat> that people use for smart home automation and smart mirrors and home security monitoring and, and robotics and all that fun stuff at the science lab. Yeah, get yourself one of those and you're going to follow along with this killer YouTube video, which is linked in the description below from this gentleman at Zez Retro. Check him out. I already hit the like button. You make sure you do the same. And this video is freakishly baller because this gentleman guides you through not only how to get the single board computer together, but also download the program that you need to flash to the board and of course how to use it to measure the input lag or delay of your controller. Also a good amount of fun. This requires soldering more steps than I would like to take when measuring the input lag or delay of my controllers. The last method is also pretty complicated and there's going to be a video linked in the description below from a YouTuber called Anna Punch who's doing this video that we're looking at right now and he or she walks you through. I think it's a team uh, because there's a lady and a male in this video I think. Again as you can see single board computer an Arduino and then they 3D print this lime green GDPL case for it. GDPL GPDL. Maybe I have that that mental condition where it mixes the numbers scrambles them together. But anyway so again this requires connecting contacts or leads to the PCB of your controller but very accurate measurement of the input lag or delay. My whole theory on this is that's cool if you're just trying to test an Xbox or PlayStation controller once so you can know for sure set in stone in granite. Yup, this is the input lag or delay. But for somebody like moi who tests dozens, if not hundreds of third party pro controllers from a variety of companies. And again, cross checking my results from these physical methods with the software programs like X input test and gamepad LA, they're usually identical or within a couple of percentile to where it's almost identical. But it is awesome that these methods do exist. And I am going to be linking both of these videos in the description below because I think they're very well put together. Tons of good controller information in there. And I want a little bit of recognition, a little salute to the people that put these together because they don't have very many views and it's killer content. What they're doing is phenomenally beneficial. Yeah, thank you for that. Also, their video quality is really good, as you can see. That's 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 cool. So now you know what input lag or delay is, the three software programs and where to get them that you can use to measure it. Also, two more involved processes if you want to pick yourself up a physical Arduino and then flash it with some source code and then hook it up to the leads of your PCB and things that I've done and don't continue to do just because the results that I get from the software programs like X input test are usually identical and save me a shitload of time that I could be using editing the smorgasbord of videos that are going to be glazing your gamer chin in 2024. Thank you for watching and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun to tomorrow.